really have even on this evening um, as we call the second ship of the This one particularly complement the message that we spoke from on this morning. On this morning, on this morning, we talked about heaven and earth singing together. We talked about heaven rejoicing and earth rejoicing over righteousness and uh, righteousness and spiritual things. On tonight, we want to show um, the other side of that as well. Because sometimes, you know, from what you don't say, people think you said something else. So I want right. to share on the other side of what I didn't say. Because uh, uh, we talked about us being among sinners. And we talked about how that looks when it came to Jesus. And, and I just want to share a few things how we are to view it. Um, the way that Jesus did. Number one, I want to share, the Bible lets us know that many are called, but few are chosen. Uh, the Bible also tells us that it's some that follow Jesus, but when Jesus tried to take them to higher heights, they turned away from Jesus. Um, I refer to John, the sixth chapter. The Bible talks about how Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He said, unless you eat from my flesh and drink of my blood, you can't have life in you. And the Bible says many departed and followed him no more. Uh, we talked about in this morning about the Beatitudes, how it was many people that loved his teachers, but he was trying to get them to another level. On another case, I just want to remind you of another case, and the Bible talks about Jesus was teaching and some came in in the middle of his teachings and said that your mother and your brothers are outside. And he said, you are my mothers and brothers, the ones who follow God. All right? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 all, and I'll give you this last example. The Bible talks about uh, when the rich man or the rich young ruler had his encounter with Jesus. He went away sorrowful. And the disciples, they were looking like, you know, if he can't be saved, how are we going to be saved? And, and they even asked Jesus, they said, now we left everything to follow you. What's going to be our reward? And Jesus said, he said, you will be rewarded in this life and the life to come. He mm -hmm. says, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some 100-fold, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I, I just want to show us that there is a demarcation between um, just someone that we associate with, and God don't ever want us to get to a point where we feel that uh, we are to be isolated and um, nobody can touch us. We belong in a museum, and uh, I'm so holy, I got to <laughs> stay away from all the unholy folks. God don't want us to get to that point. The God, God said, be in the world, but not of the world. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be able to uh, introduce sinners to him and to the fellowship. But I, I also want us to be reminded that the Bible says several things about fellowship because we understand that when we take this communion, the Bible says, examine yourselves to see if you're in the faith as well. So it's one thing to have a common meal with somebody. I invite anybody out to dinner, you know, sit at the table with them. But it's another thing to be in fellowship yeah. and in communion with someone. Mm -hmm. That's that second mile. That's going to a higher height. Everybody don't go to that level. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, somebody, you know, people come to your house, they go to a restaurant with you. But we trying to get people to this level. Amen. Remember Jesus said, Jesus said, he said, there's room in my house. Mm -hmm. It's prepared. People made excuses. I ain't coming. He said, go into the byways and the highways. There's room in my house. Fill up the house. But, but as we say on that sign, and I know the sign came by Sister McCutcheon, the sign says, uh, come as you are. 
and you can change on the inside. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So we want people, we want everybody to come, man. We 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 are not to isolate ourselves from nobody, but there is a higher height to go to in what we call fellowship. And that's what we're gonna be dealing with even on this evening. So I, I wanna I want you to turn with me over to the book of First John. And if you can stand with me to your feet and we want to read the first few verses, first John, and let's begin reading that verse number one, and look what the Bible says. The Bible says in first John, the first chapter, verse number one, it says, what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes. What we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life, and the life was manifested, and we have seen and testified and proclaimed to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. Verse number three. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write so that our joy may be made complete. Uh, uh, I want to take my topic from that last verse, and um, I also want to take it from a song that we sing, Leaning on the un, uh, Ever um, Unchanging Hands of God. Um, oh, what fellowship, oh, what joy divine. Amen, amen. amen. Leaning. <laughs> On the everlasting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Everlasting hands of God. So on this evening, I just want to give you a little background of what's taking place in our text. We've been going through the book of Galatians in our Wednesday night class. And one of the things that Paul, the Apostle Paul, started off with in this epistle, he reassured the church that he was an apostle of Jesus Christ, but also his message came from God as well. And one of the things that's taking place in our text on tonight, the author, whose name is John, he is defending the gospel, but he's letting us know and letting the people at this time know that the foundation of the gospel is Jesus Christ. The doctrine that they believe came from Jesus Christ. And what John explains to them, and you'll see it shortly, John was explaining to them, and he wanted us to be cognitive of this, is the fact that, you know, if we destroy the foundation of the church, if we neutralize who Jesus is, then our gospel, our believing, our coming together really has no merit without Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. John, he says that really... He wants us to understand that if you don't accept Jesus for who he is, which is the son of God, uh, uh, one of the Godhead, he says, really, you don't really have any foundation for religion at all. Amen? Mm -hmm. He explains in this text, he says that there is a dichotomy, and I keep using that word, and pretty much what that's saying there, that there is a parallel. He's showing that really, we talked about it in the Sunday school, you cannot be lukewarm. Mm -hmm. You cannot be almost a Christian. Mm -hmm. Either you're a Christian or you're not a Christian. Mm -hmm. I said it before, and it's not good grammar, but it worked before. Either you're a saint or you ain't. <laughs> uh, and it's really no middle ground. Mm -hmm. uh, John, he explains that either you are, are, are either you in the light or you in darkness. Mm -hmm. He explained, either you're a child of God or you're a child of the devil. Mm. Either you love your brother or you hate your brother. I see. John, neither at the time nor the, he, he neither had the inclination to really be around the bush. He didn't have time to play games. 
He, he knew that souls were at stake. He knew that the truth was being challenged. He knew the church was being assailed. He knew the church was being assaulted. He knew Christ was being dethroned. He knew that it was a, 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 a perpetration or it was a philosophy going out that Christ was not the son of God. Mm -hmm. So John just dabbed right into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And John explains some things, and he wants us to know. He says uh, he, he was explaining to them who was of the false teachers who who were claimed, or, and, and they they tried to act like they were true believers, but they were abandoning the truth. Mm -hmm. So he he presented to them, like I'm presenting to us on tonight. He presented to them. He says, now either you accept Christ. Or you cannot accept anything to do with Christ. Mm. Okay, okay, mm. okay. See, there are so many people in our world who want heaven, mm. but don't want to hear or heed to the word. They want peace without a price. They want blessing without behavior. Mm. They want salvation without sacrifice. They want rewards without righteousness. They want unity without humility. They want praise without precepts. They want singing without soul saving. They want Christ mm. without the church. They want deliverance without dedication. They want edification without endurance. They want favor without faithfulness. They want glory without godliness. They want joy without mm. judgment. They want knowledge without study. Mm. They want to overcome without obedience. And, and in our text, John affirms to us that the truth of the matter, if we want all these things, we have to go back to the beginning. That's right. Look what he says in verse number one. In verse number one of our text, he says, he says, in he says, what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes. What we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. John says, now, if you're going to have all these things, you got to go back to the beginning. Mm. See, faith or Christianity starts with Christ. Mm -hmm. See, when you start at the right place, you can get the right results. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember over there in John, the first chapter, uh, uh, as we just read, he said that which was from the beginning. Uh, uh, Y'all remember that? But, but he said that Jesus is the centerpiece of our eternal life and everything that we believe. Jesus is the originator. Jesus is the object of eternal life. Jesus is the one who reveals the mind of God. Jesus don't only reveal the mind of God, but he executes what God wants him to carry out in the earth realm. Y'all remember over in John, I'm talking about the gospel of John. John, the first chapter, verse number one, amen, I'm about to preach in a minute. Uh, uh, the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Mm -hmm. In the word was God. John 1.14 says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Mm -hmm. John 1.18 says, no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. No one seen God. And, and then John lets us know in, in John 6, 63, he says, the flesh prophets nothing but the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But look what the Bible says in John. I'm talking about the gospel according to John. Mm -hmm. John 12, 48 says, he who rejects me, talking about Jesus, and does not receive my words, have that which judge him, the word that I have spoken to him will judge him in the last days. Mm -hmm. Now, John is reminding us, go back to the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. he, he said, go back to the beginning about Christ Jesus. Because you got to understand, we, we read, we started off in the epistle of John. The epistle of John was written after the church was established. It was written after many men and women had been added to the body of Christ. 
But there rose up some that was teaching another gospel, as Paul said, which is not another gospel. And they were trying to say that Jesus wasn't really the son of God. So what, what he reminds them of, he says, go th over to the beginning and, and think about what Jesus was saying. Wow. Okay, okay. <laughs> Look what he said. He said, now, we not only heard him, we seen him. Mm -hmm. Amen. We, don't, we didn't only see them, we touched them. Mm -hmm. Amen. They, they, said, they said, now, the words that we heard, we didn't read it in the book. We heard them with our own ears. Amen. We seen him with our own eyes. We, we, we heard him speak. We heard him say and questioning uh, what the Jews said. He, he said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Mm -hmm. They say we heard him when he said to Nicodemus, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. we, we heard when he said, lift up your eyes and look at the fields for they are already white for the harvest. They, they heard him say, my hour has come. The hour was coming when all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. They heard when he said the, the good to the resurrection of life and the evil to the resurrection of condemnation. They heard him say the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives to the world. They heard him say, I am the light of the world. Mm -hmm. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. But, but they said not only did we hear him, we saw him. They saw the spirit descend on him like a dove at his baptism. Mm -hmm. They saw him heal with their hands and straighten crooked backs. They, they saw him evict fevers and cleanse lepers. They saw him evacuate demons and denounce diseases. They saw him erase blindness and open up closed ears. They saw his glory. They saw him open up a restaurant on the hillside <laughs> and feed the multitudes. Mm. They saw him enter into sick rooms and stop funerals and call the dead out of the grave. Mm. They saw him correct blindness without laser surgery. They saw him get money to pay taxes by commanding a fish to come out the sea. They say not only did we hear him, we saw him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They said not only did we see him, not only did we hear him, we handled him. Mm. Oh God, I thought I thought somebody would be touched by this on tonight. <laughs> but they said he wasn't a ghost. He wasn't the figment of our imagination. We touched him as well. Uh, uh, Y'all remember Jesus saying, unless you eat of my flesh and my blood, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Not only that, remember John was leaning on his, uh, on his bosom at the last supper. Not only that, y'all remember Thomas said, I need to touch your hands and I need to touch your side and I need to touch your feet. And then I believe, they said, not only did we hear him, not only did we see him, but we touched him. Amen. We touched him. After the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We had fellowship with him after the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember we was on we were on the road to Amaris and he appeared. Amen. And even after the resurrection, he still had the nerve to cook breakfast for us. <laughs> he said, Come and eat with me. I'm talking about fellowship on tonight. It's one thing to take somebody out to dinner, but I'm talking about fellowship on tonight. Mm -hmm. he, he, said, he says, now, we have fellowship with him. Mm -hmm. And there's some joy that came out of this fellowship. Amen. We felt his hands after he washed the dirty feet with towels. Mm -hmm. First John 2 and 3 says, for the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you. See, John wanted them to know like God wants us to know. 
that Jesus' message was authentic, it was ac accurate, and it was authoritative. Uh, John is letting them know, like Paul let the church in Galatia know, that this gospel didn't come from us. It came from God. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Lord sent the apostles into the world to declare or proclaim the message. Jesus prayed in one of his last prayers before he went back to the Father. He said, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Mm -hmm. He said that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. Amen. See, God says, the reason that we have fellowship is because we have fellowship with the Father and the Son. Amen? Mm -hmm. See, the reason that we have fellowship, as the Bible tells us, John says, walk in the light mm -hmm. as he is in the light. Then we have fellowship with mm -hmm. one another and we have fellowship with the Father. Amen. Yeah. Okay, here's my point. Here's my point. Here's the, the, the big point. Acts the second chapter, verse number 42 says, they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine in fellowship. Mm. And, and this is where I want to encourage the church at tonight because sometimes, amen, uh, uh, we want people to get it. We want people to be here. We want people to uh, come and join us. We, we're so wonderful and our hearts is right and we, <laughs> we just want the best for folks and, and we wonder why people just don't embrace it and get it. Mm. But the Bible lets us know in order for us to go to the heights that God is ultimately trying to take us, we, we can't just have a little uh, uh, a little fickle or a little uh, um um a shallow relationship with one another. Mm. God says he will ultimately wants to get us to a point where we can have true fellowship with each other. Amen. And how does that look when we continue in the doctrine? Then we can have true fellowship with one another. James said it this way. James said uh, first purity then peace. See, sometimes we want it the opposite way. We want peace, and then we want purity. But the Bible says we need to have a mindset that we want to do things decent and in order uh, and according to the word of God, and then we'll have peace with one another. Well, how does that look, Brother Smith? See, sometimes, sometimes we think, we think just because ain't no fighting, just because everybody ain't shouting and, and nobody's getting out of control, that the church is doing all right. Mm. But sometimes what needs to be dealt with needs to be dealt with. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 And, and you know, I, I always use the example with our children. You know, if sometimes our children need to be disciplined, they need to know what they did was wrong in order for them to be back in right relationship with us. Mm -hmm. see, see some stuff we just can't overlook we can't just say oh it's okay no the bible is stuck on doctrine mm -hmm. the bible says the way that we have true fellowship if we continue in the teachings of Christ yes. see everything just don't go and, and I know I know, we want people to get it and we want people to go the second mile but everybody just not going to accept Christ and that's no reflection on us. That's what the Bible tells us in Matthew the 13th chapter that a man went out sowing seed. Some fell on good ground. Some fell on shallow ground. Some fell on rocky ground. And, and the Bible explains to us um, the point of God saying all that was not the fact that we are not to um, sow seed. But he said, don't worry about the different grounds. He wants us to continue to sow seed. First Corinthians says, one water, one planet, but who gave the increase? God. God gave the increase. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? Our job is to continue to extend ourselves, but when people don't want to go to higher heights, 
That's no reflection on us. I'm trying to help us because we, this is the core group right here. Amen. Amen. We on the second shift. See, see, you, I don't know if y'all <laughs> noticed the day it taper off on the day. You know, that it, you know, by the nighttime, you know, you you got the core group on tonight. <laughs> but but on the core group, it's no reflection on us. It's up between them and God, That's brother. Right. They are going to go the second mile. That's right. Amen. Don't stop being good. Mm -hmm. Don't stop doing what you need to do That's for Christ right. Jesus. That's right. Amen. Because everybody mm -hmm. who hear Christ Jesus is not going to accept them. Mm -hmm. That's good. They're not, they don't want to go and become the full person that God is calling them to be. Mm -hmm. I'm all right where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be challenged no more. I'm straight, you know. I just want to be me. But Christ is going to continue to challenge us. That's right. See, God, God wants us to endure. He wants us. That's why he tells us, he says, he that puts his hands to the plow, don't look back. If mm -hmm. what he's trying to let us know is doable. Mm-hmm. If everything else is doable, why living for God ain't doable? Hmm. That's a good question right there. <laughs> if I'm able to work 30 or 40 years on a job and retire and get a gold watch and then leave <laughs> and go get another job, <laughs> I'm in Walmart at 75 years old as a greeter. <laughs> or uh, let's get off of Walmart. We got congressmen that stay in Congress till they're 95 years old. If they able to stay, if that's doable, why is not doable to be a child of God from the time we accept them until he called us home? God has said it is doable. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But we got to be willing to go the second mile and allow God to uh, transform us into the person that he's calling us to become. Amen. Don't stop in the middle of your transformation. Just like a butterfly who used to be a, a caterpillar. Mm -hmm. Don't don't get stuck in the cocoon. Mm. God wants you to come out. He wants you to spread your wings in Christ.